Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, and now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts, Mr. Shenanigans himself, and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Can, trying to get back on the track here of bringing some fun, co positive, fun content for all of you out there. And we're, it's the fifth edition of Big Beefy E's Boston Sports Beat. Well, I talk everything about Boston sports and then and, and the four major sports, what's going on, um, how our some of our teams would connect with other teams as far as trades and everything else. And uh, the reason why it is the fifth, I want to make it appropriate. The Red Sox are on a five-game winning streak, starting with the last game they've taken, um, two out of, they've taken one out of three against the Colorado Rockies at Fenway. And then they swept the Yankees. That's right, they swept the New York Yankees. In fact, they mollywopped the Yankees 15-5 to five Fridays on this, past, um, this game um, past Friday night. And then they took the day-night doubleheader on Father's Day because the game on Saturday got rained out. It was a stormy day, trust me. I had, <clears throat> I had, a, I had when I got out of work and it was dry until it started coming down, the rain, I came rushing. I changed my clothes and then I, and I looked outside and I said, crap, I'm going to have to make a run for it. And... <laughs> Fortunately, I did got drenched a little bit in the process, <clears throat> but overall, overall, unfortunately, the game got rained out. But, but it was made up for it. Uh, day night doubleheader. Red Sox won the first game. They swept it. Uh, this is the first time they swept a doubleheader against the Yankees since 1976. I'm not kidding you. Since 19. 76, man. Let me tell you. Um, I'll tell you what is um, going on. And, uh... Ah, okay. Uh, Alright, uh, some other news from the, from the Red Sox. Uh, Tanner, Howell's, Tanner Howell will need surgery after a facial fracture. Um, in fact, uh, what... And uh, he was doing pretty well until he got his, his, his sideline. Uh, we'll need a replacement for him in the rotation and against the Twins in Thursday in, tomorrow, in Thursday series finale against the Twins. So Tanner Hawk was supposed to pitch, but now they're going to have to replace him. Uh, Alex Verdugo's big game carried the Red Sox as the Twins. Like the bottom of that lineup of the Red Sox um, helped beat the Twins definitely. So. Uh, so are they going to go for win number six? We'll find out tonight as they um they're about to um they're probably gonna get going in a few. <clears throat> it's seven forty. I'll tell you what. Um let's check out now the Celtics have been rumor has it there's been trades involved. Um uh, the uh, trade uh their Bill Simmons floating logical trade. Um you know uh, and Mark is smart, but at the same time, they're interested in DeAndre Ayton. Um, I do believe the Hawks and the Celtics are interested in him. Let's see what the latest news is. Uh, <clears throat> well, and they're thinking of you know logical you know trade. Mark is smart, you know, and uh, um, Derek White, Mark, Malcolm Brogdon, Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard. They were all. The Red Sox, are, you know, the Red Sox, the Celtics are trying to trade. I mean, after losing to Miami, and I think you know, could be some key, some players could, could be some, um, um and just uh, you know, maybe maybe the Celtics should wait till, um, um, till till the draft to see what they can they can do with the number thirty five pick. So. Anyways, um, the Boston Globe hired uh, Phil uh, 
Uh, Phil Pressey to the uh, coaching staff. Let's see if I can find any more on that. Um, uh, and he's a former Celtics guard. So... Mm. Mm. So, uh, let's see what happens, you know. Uh, and uh, League Source believes Jalen Brown, Grant Williams will remain the Celtics this offseason. Uh, sharp shooting, free agency. Uh, uh, Malcolm Brogdon, maybe they, they like Malcolm Bro Mark, Marcus Smart. Should this Celtics, I don't know what is going on. Um, let's see. Um, Uh, Phil Pressy. Um, let's see. Uh, if one, he's a former Celtics guy, um, so assistant to Joe Muzula. So I think more more of um, a new sta coaching staff for Joe Muzula is going to be very, very helpful. Now, we're going to ch check on the Patriots' Jack Jones before, uh, uh, you know, he pleads not guilty to gun charges is released on bail. So, uh, maybe, um, mm. oh, A.J. Francis, oh, he's a, he was a Patriots uh, practice squatter, I, Tom Dollar, I did not know this, a little wrestling connection, uh, you know, part of the hit row faction, uh, let me see if I can, uh, W.E. Creative, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh boy, mm. he spent time, yeah, top dollar, A.J. Francis, uh, that's his real name, uh, played nine games with Miami Dolphins, Seahawks, and the Washington uh, commanders when skins back then. He spent time in New England's practice squad after going undrafted in 2013, but never appeared in a regular season contest for head coach Bill Belichick. Oh boy, <laughs> I didn't know Do Top Dollar was a Patriots uh, practice squatter. That I did not know. Uh, that is holy. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, latest Vian Andre gives more context to visit with Patriots. Let's see what I, uh, he has to say uh, on here. Uh, Patriots, and the, while the Patriots released stale, stale milling a contender along the Tennessee Titans and uh, advocates, but had similar feelings to trip to Nashville to sit with head coach and Mike Vrabel and the Titans. Both teams told Hawkins he had elite capabilities. Uh, he would instantly become the number one wide receiver for the eye of the Patriots or, uh, Patriots or Titans. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy. So, how much, you know. Now, Jack Jones, he did, uh, you know. You know. Uh, okay. Get that out of here. Okay. Uh, I'm tired of this. Um. Uh, all right, now you know he um, he pleaded. All right, night guilty to nine firearms related charges, posting a thirty thousand dollar bail. Afterward, um, is far from over the legal proceedings. Patriot protect a lengthy prison time if convicted due to Massachusetts strict gun policy, which defense attorney Ben Urbelis uh, explained during. He's charged with some serious firearm charges. As you know, he was charged for a, a board, trying to board a plane with loaded weapons and all that. Uh, he, most serious being the possession of carrying a large capacity feeding device, which basically is attached to the firearm, allegedly the feeding device capable of carrying at least 10 rounds. That carries, if convicted, a mandatory prison sentence from two and a half up to years up to 10 years. And if he's going to be serving prison uh, prison time, the Patriots might, might as well cut him, you know. And the Patriots, it was like Jones in the fourth round of the 2022 NFL draft, would address the situation at hand after a report being livid over the this off-the-field issue uh, hasn't been a central controversy. 
behavioral contact, uh, problematic behavioral contact, dates for his days ASU at Arizona State University, uh, was suspended by the Patriots for a confrontation. Um, I got a feeling they're going to release him. If that, if this is any uh, due back in court a day before New, in New England's preseason. Um, August 18th will be his date um, to come back to court before New England's preseason matchup against Green Bay Packers. Uh, I would be surprised if he's still a Patriot this time. But with these serious with these serious charges, uh, you know how Bill Belichick feels about that, you know. So uh, I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, hey, Aaron Hernandez was was gone when he was arrested for murder. Um, so uh, you know, but you know, gun charges and uh, Jack Jones was supposed to be one of the top, was supposed to be a great defender for the Patriots at cornerback. But unfortunately, you know, you make a boneheaded decision like that, you're going to, um, you're going to, unfortunately, you're going to get cut by the team. So, um, let's go for one more, uh, let's go see what the Bruins are up to. And, uh, uh they signed goaltender Brendan Bussey to an extension, a one year, a contract, two way contract. So, I don't know if he's going to step up to the plate to be the new goaltender for the Bruins. Let's, let's see if we check out another Bruins news before we go. Um, and that was the first move to 2020 up, you know, you know, as uh, Bruins, uh, so looks like uh, Mike Riley could be, end up being traded to re- to um, make room, create sal- uh, salary cap space. So, uh, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be uh, an interesting situation. Who you now will the Bruins try to improve their team? Even though because they they had the best record in the NHL until they got knocked off by Florida in the first round. So here's the thing. So I think they should look to look to improve their team to see make it better so they can go beyond in the playoffs. You know. So maybe you know a lot of people say, oh, our New England sports teams we do well and all that, and then all of a sudden they fell in the second half. You know why? Injuries. They catch up to our players. I don't know if y'all just need to realize this. All right? The reason why most of our teams do well in the first half and then fail in the second half, injuries are going to catch up to our key players in any team, whether it be the Red Sox, the Celtics, the Patriots, the Bruins. Guys, you got to get a grip on this. All right? This is what happens. You know, it, it's going to hurt teams down the road. Teams, Most of the teams do well in the first half. If they can keep going... With that and be healthy, great. They, the key is playing healthy. The problem is our players on every New England sports teams injuries, injuries, injuries. They affect the team in the second half of the of the se- of any season. Whether it be baseball for the Red Sox, football for the Patriots, hockey for the Bruins, and basketball for the Celtics, that's what happens. Injuries because you play hard. Injuries are going to catch up, and that's it. That's all I got to say. So, uh, what you know? So the Red Sox will try to go for their sixth win against the uh, Minnesota Twins. Tanner Houck is going to get facial surgery. Hopefully, he'll be all right. Be out for a great length of time, so they're going to find somebody to replace him in Thursday's series finale against the Twins. We'll find out for sure. Well, that's it. That's all the time we have on this show. Episode six hundred fifty-four of Eric Lemus and Yenigans is complete. And not only that, Big BPE's Boston Sports Beat 5 is also coming complete. So, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A Big BPE, do it for Bob Saget production. In association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries telepictures and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the Demon Network for great more content like this one.